गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी आई एम महिमा सक्सेना असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट सी एस ई डिपार्टमेंट इन ए के जी सी टूडे टूडे इज टॉपिक फॉर माई लेक्चर इज इंस्टेंस बेस लर्निंग बेसिकली वॉट इज इंस्टेंस बेस्ड लर्निंग द मशीन लर्निंग सिस्टम विच आर कैटेगराइज एज इंस्टेंस बेस्ड लर्निंग एट द सिस्टम दैट लर्न द ट्रेनिंग एग्जाम्पल्स बाई हार्ट एंड देन जर्नलाइज टू न्यू इंस्टेंसिस बेस्ड ऑन सम सिमिलैरिटी मेजर्स इट इज कॉल्ड इंस्टेंस बिकॉज इट बिल्स द हाइपोथेसिस फ्रॉम द ट्रेनिंग इंस्टेंसिस इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज मेमोरी बेस्ड लर्निंग और लेजी लर्नर्स एंड दे डिले प्री प्रोसेसिंग अंटिल अंटिल अ न्यू इंस्टेंस मस्ट बी classify the the time complexity of this algorithm depends upon the size of training data each time whenever a new uh, query or a new data is encountered its previously stored data is examined and assigned to a target function value for the new instance basically in instance pay instance based learning is a lazy learner in lazy learners uh, it it sto- it basically stores it's basically done on memory based learning lazy learners uh, learn uh, uh, slowly because of because they are lazy that's why they are called lazy learners the advantages of lazy learners uh, instead of est- estimating for the entire instance set local approximations can be made to the target function this algorithm can adapt to new data easily one which is collected as we go the disadvantage of instance based learning are classification costs cost are high large amount of memory required to store the data and each query involves starting the identification of a local local model from scratch uh, from scratch the different types of uh, instance based learning are k theorist neighbor locally weighted regression case based reasoning radial basis functions now i will study these uh, in brief these topics in brief what is k nearest neighbor k nearest neighbor is one of the simplest machine learning algorithm based on supervised learning technique now what is supervised learning technique supervised learning is a tech supervised learning is a part of machine learning is a type basically is a type of machine learning in which we have inputs and outputs both are present and we need to map it with correct input and correct output basically supervised learning is not suitable for real time data uh, and in supervised learning uh, different types of class different types of uh, uh, classification and uh, regression is done in knn algorithm assume the similarity between the new case data and available cases and put the new case into the category that is most popular or similar to the available categories basically knn algorithm stores all the available data and classify a new data points based on the similarity this means when the new data appears it can easily be easily be classified into a well suited category by using knn algorithm knn algorithm can be used for regression as well as for classification but but mostly it is used for the classification problem knn is a non parametric algorithm which means it does not make any assumptions on the underlying data it is also called as lazy learner because it does not learn because it does not learn from the training set immediately instead instead it stores the data set and at the time of classification it is formed and it performs some actions on the data set knn at the training phase knn at the training phase just must store the data set and when it gets new data then it classify the data into the category that is must similar to the a new data basically we have a data set some data we used for training and some data we used for testing and some data we used for validation uh, uh, generally we use of uh, 70 to 30% data 70 for uh, uh, testing and 30 for training in knrs neighbor we have a set of uh, we have some data according to that we store some data and we learn from it after that we apply some uh, basic like euclidean distance with the help of euclidean distance or manhattan distance we calculate the distance and put that particular data on that clusters 
why do we need kn algorithm suppose there are two categories that is category a and category b and we have a new data point x1 so this data will lie in these of category to solve this problem we need a kn algorithm with the help of knn we easily identify the category or class of a particular data set suppose we have a data set uh, like in this example we said uh, we have a data set we have two categories of data category a and category b in category a basically category a is called a cluster now what is a cluster in cluster we uh, all the data items are present with similar properties that is called a cluster uh, some some similar properties in category a and some sim some similar properties in category b now we have a data data point x1 we we try to match these uh, properties from category a or from category b if they satisfied any condition they satisfy all the conditions basically from category a or category b then the data point is put in that particular category this is the whole working of knn algorithm now uh, how knn algorithm works basically working of knn algorithm select the number of k of the neighbors generally in question or generally in algorithm they already given us the value of k with the help of that value we calculate it now calculate the euclidean distance of k numbers of neighbor euclidean distance is a formula in which we used uh, observed value minus actual value observed value is already given in the question and actual value is the data point the for which we need to calculate the data take the k nearest neighbor as per the calculated euclidean distance among these k neighbors count the number of data points and and in each category assign the new data point to the to that category for which the number of the neighbor is maximum now our model is ready this is the complete knn algorithm knn algorithm is unsupervised algorithm advantages of knn algorithm no training period is required in knn we don't need to train the data because knn modeling does not include training data as the data itself is a model will be reference for future predictions and because of this it is very time efficient in terms of improvising or a random modeling on the available data easy impl easy implementation knn is very easy to implement KNN is the simplest algorithm and it is very very easy to implement uh, as compared to uh, PCA principal component analysis uh, K means clustering K methoid many algorithms are there from all of them KNN is the simplest and easiest algorithm uh, KNN is very easy to implement as the one thing to be calculated is the distance between the data points on the basis of data of different features and this distance can easily be calculating using distant formula like euclidean distance on manhattan distance both euclidean distance and Man manhattan are used for calculating uh, distance from data points basically between the data points as there is no training period thus new data can be added at any time since it wouldn't affect the model uh, in knn we add the data at any time because it just doesn't affect the model because in in knn no training is required whenever we want we apply uh, whenever we want we add data but in some limit now the disadvantages of knn does not work well with large data set as calculating distance between each data instance would be very costly knn the biggest advantage of knn is it does not apply we cannot apply knn on large data set because on calculating data it's a time consuming process and it's it will be very costly second is does not work well with high dimensionality as this will complicate the distance calculating process to calculate distance for each dimensions sensitivity to noisy and missing data if the value is not present then it is very difficult to calculate this is the uh, most uh, biggest advantage for knn feature scaling data in all the dimension should be scaled normalized and standard standardized properly basically data for uh, suppose we have a data set and that data set is particularly present on uh, some uh, Uh, dimensions basically one dimensional two dimensional all the data set is present in same direction dimension if the data set is not present in same dimension then we need to uh, calculate it and we need to uh, basically we need to summarize it into particular dimension it is time consuming and it is 
money wasting now the next topic is local weighted regression uh, this is the other type of instance based learning local weighted regression emerges as a notable approach that bolsters predictive accuracy through the integration of local adaptation in contrast to conventional linear regression models which presume a universal correlation among variables locally weighted regression acknowledge the significance of local patterns and relationship present in the data now what is now the in this uh, definition i used a word linear regression now what is linear regression linear reg regression is basically we calculate the relationship between the dependent and independent variable this is called linear regression how much the dependent variable is dependent on that particular variable in the subsequent in the subsequent disclosure we mark or on an exploration of the fundamental principle diverse applications and inherent advantages offered by local weighted regression local weighted regression functions on the premises that the association between the dependent and independent variables adheres to linearly however the relationship al relationship is allowed to exhibit variability across distinct sections within the data set this is achieved by employing an individual linear regression model for each prediction employ a weighted least square technique the data set the determination of weights is carried out throughly a kernel function which is which was ele uh, elevated elevated weights upon data and points to predict out and diminishing the weights for those that are further away basically for lwr we need to apply linear regression model for each prediction that's why this is better benefits of locally weighted regression linear regression improve predictive accuracy by uh, by considering local patterns and relationship LWLR can capture subtle nuances in the data that might be overlooked by global regression model this results in more accurate predictions and better model performances flexibility and adaptability LWLR can adapt to different regions of the data set making it suitable for complex and non linear relationship it offers flexibility in capturing local variations allow allowing for more nuisance analysis and insights next it interpreceptible result despite its adaptive nature lwlr still provides interpredict interpretable results the localized model offers insights into the relationship between variables within specific regions of the data adding in the underline of complex phenomena The second topic is case based learning case based sorry case based reasoning case based reasoning is a proper popular artificial intelligence technique that utilizes previous experiences to solve new problems it is a type of machine learning that relies on analogical reasoning which is the process of finding similarities between past situations and the new ones basically and adapting them to the current situation to make a decision or solve a problem in this we will discuss what case based learning is its process how it's compare with the other method it advantages and challenges technique that is used to solve problems based on past experiences the technique is derived from human problem solving approaches where people often rely on their past experiences to make decisions in new situations case based reasoning is a type of machine learning that utilizes the database of previously solved problems or cases to solve new problems cbr is a cbr basically is based on the idea that similar problems that sim similar problems can have similar solutions and it uses the similar and it uses the similarity to find solutions to new problems advantages in case based learning reusability uh, because we are uh, solving problems from past experiences so reusability reusability is the uh, biggest advantage of this topic cbr system can reuse past solutions to similar problems which can save time efforts compared to developing a solution from scratch it is it, it's 
it's easy for the developer or for the problem solver to calc to use the past solution for the new problem because it is similar to the past problem the, uh, that's why the, the reusability is good because it save time effort from uh, compared to developing a new solution from scratch adaptability cbr system can adapt to changing situations or context by selecting and modifying relevant cases third is explanation cbr system can provide explanation for their solutions based on the similar cases they retrieve learning cbr system can learn from new cases and refine their knowledge base over time sometimes it happens that some new situations occur then the data will capture that situations and learn from it basically it stores that particular data and give solutions according to their uh, previous database but for future it will save that data and it will capture that data because if uh, in future any this type of situation is occur then it will give that uh, solution for that particular data next topic is challenges in case based learning case representation the quality of cbr depends on the accuracy and completeness of the cases used to solve a problem if the case our cases are not represented are not well represented it may lead to incorrect solution basically case representation is the uh, most challenging part of this if the problem if the data is not present in a correct manner then the solution is not given in that particular manner sometimes the representation is wrong then the solution may be wrong or maybe not wrong basically case representation is important to solve a problem if representation is wrong then the solution may may be incorrect or may lead to incorrect solution second is case retrieval the success of cbr system depends on the ability to retrieve relevant cases from the case base if the retrieval process is not effective or efficient it may lead to a poor solution case retrieval is important because if the retrieve uh, if we didn't retrieve the correct possible correct possible solution or correct basically correct correct representation correct data set then the solution then the solution may be incorrect second option sec, uh, third is adaptation adaptation adapting a retrieve case to a new problem domain can be difficult as the retrieve case may not be perfectly match the new problem third is scalability the size of the case base grows time required to retrieve and adapt case can be significant which can impact the if efficiency of the system basically scalability is important factor uh, if it if it lacks then the system will uh, lack or then the system will face many issues third topic is radial basis function radial basis are specific types of neural network that follows a feed forward approach and make use of radial basis function as activation function now what is neural network neural network is basically a, uh, a neural network is basically a part of a very uh, complicated part of deep learning in uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning neural network is based neural network is basically of different types first is uh, feed forward neural network second is back propagation neural network in feed forward neural network the 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 direction of that neural network is always in forward direction it never comes in opposite direction first we assign we have a input we assign some weights on that input we calculate some distances we apply some activation functions and it will further proceed in uh, the forward direction in output the output uh, the output we gets in forward direction this is called feed forward neural network second is back propagation neural network in back propagation neural network first we have input first we have a uh, uh, observed uh, basically observed uh, in a observed output second we get input we assign some weights we calculate a uh, weight with the help of activation functions we calculate the output and after that we will match observed and actual output the output we calculated with the help of activation function some differences are present if the difference is uh, much more then we again came back from the starting position we again assigned uh, we again get input and we uh, we perform some changes on weights and then with the help of activation function we again calculated weights 
बैक प्रोपोगेशन दिस इज कॉल्ड बैक प्रोपोगेशन बिकॉज आफ्टर कैलकुलेटिंग द आउटपुट वन टाइम वी अगेन केम बैक एंड चेंज इज द वेट ऑफ द फंक्शन एंड देन वी कैलकुलेट अगेन दिस बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इट इज कॉल्ड बैक प्रोपोगेशन न्यूरल नेटवर्क न्यूरल नेटवर्क आर द बेसिकली न्यूरल नेटवर्क ट्राई टू मिमिक ह्यूमन ब्रेन इट विल वर्क लाइक अ ह्यूमन ब्रेन इट इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डीप लर्निंग एंड इट विल यूज इन कैप्चरिंग द इमेजेस लाइक रियल टाइम इमेजेस फॉर सी एन एन कॉन्वेशनल न्यूरल नेटवर्क एंड रिकरेंट न्यूरल नेटवर्क वी यूज फॉर कैप्चरिंग द इमेजेस बेसिकली फॉर क्लासिफिकेशन फॉर ऑब्जेक्ट ट्रैकिंग एक्सेट्रा नाउ रेडियल कम टू द टॉपिक अगैन नाउ वॉट इज रेडियल बेसिस फंक्शन रेडियल बेसिस फंक्शन आर स्पेसिफिक टाइप ऑफ न्यूरल नेटवर्क दैट फॉलो अ फीड फॉरवर्ड अप्रोच एंड मेक यूज ऑफ रेडियल फंक्शन एज एक्टिवेशन फंक्शन दे कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री लेयर्स namely the input layer hidden layer and output layer which are mostly used for time series prediction regression technique and classification technique now what is a classification technique classification techniques are the techniques in which uh, we use continuous data continuous data is like uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 these are the continuous data regression techniques is generally what is regression now regression is we have a uh, like hundreds of decision trees they predict the output and uh, uh, calculate the all together they called th this is called a regression technique rbf radial basis function networks do these tasks by measuring the by measuring the similarities present in the training set they usually have an input factor that feeds that these data into the input layer therefore by confirming the identification and ruling out results by comparing previous data set precisely the input layer has neurons that that are sensitive to these data and the nodes in the layer are very classifying are are efficient in classifying the class of data neurons are originally present in the hidden layer throughout they work in the close integration with the input layer the hidden layer contains gaussian transfer function that are inversely that are inversely proportional to the distance of the output from the neurons center the output layer has linear combinations of the radial based data where the gaussian functions where where the gaussian functions are passed in the neurons as parameter and output is generated now suppose we have two classes of data one is a circle and the other is a star data Uh, the the all the data is in one dimension now the data we cannot separate the data with the help of some line uh, the the data is separate if the data is separated with, within the single line with the help of a single line then it is called a linearly separable data if the data is not separated with the help of single line that it is non that is called a non linearly separable data if the data is not separated with the help of non linear uh, and the, with the help of single line then it is called non linear data with that data we can used radial bias function with the help of radial bias function first we change its dimension basically with the help of uh, some functions uh, like gaussian trans, uh, transfer functions etc these are some functions with the help of these functions we change the dimension of that data suppose the data is present in one dimensional two dimension then we present in and we put it into a uh, higher dimension basically we change the data set low dimension to higher dimension that with the help of these gaussian transfer function and after that we again try to separate it and and if the, it if it is separable then then it is called a linearly separable function in svm we similarly we this approach is similarly used in svm in svm the linearly separate if the data is separated with the help of a single line then it is called linearly separable if the data is not separated with a single line then it is called non linear separable and in for the non linear separable we use kernel method kernel method is basically we we gave the we have the low dimensional data we apply kernels and then th that kernel will transform that data into higher dimensional data suppose we have a one dimensional data we gave that one dimensional data to the to kernel kernel will apply some functions etc and then after that the kernel will give the output and the output will be the two dimensional data this is called kernel function method 
Now the advantages of linear basis function. With the help of linear basing function, it is possible to solve the problems in data set that have complex non-linear distribution. The, um, the, this is called non-linear data. Basically, the advantages of uh, radial basis function is that we we, we will use radial basis function for non-linearly separable data. Non-linearly non separable data that is not separated with the help of a single line. This is called non-linearly separable data. RBF function has a strong tolerance to input noise. In RBF neural network, there will be only one hidden layer which is very too easy handle. In neural networks, we have input layer, we have some input layer, we have a hidden input layers and we have output layer. All the, we got the input, we have assigned some weights and all the calculation is performed by hidden layers. In some neural networks, we have one hidden layer, we have two la hidden layer and in some neural network, we have n number of hidden layers. The more the hidden layer are present, the more strong, the, the more the, the number of hidden layers are present, then the more the complex values can handle by neural networks. And that neural network is more powerful compared to uh, those models who have single hidden layer. Hidden patterns, uh, RBF functions has a strong tolerance to input noise. In RBF neural network, there will be one more hidden layer, only one hidden layer, which is very easy to handle. Hidden patterns in the distributions can be generalized better by applying the RBF function. We have a data set and we apply radial basis functions on that data set to generalize the patterns, the pattern that are present in the data set. Some patterns are definitely present in the data set. With the help of patterns, we, we generalize that patterns and we try to put that data items according to their patterns, according to the properties that we generalize, that we basically calculate, that we, uh, we, that we determined with the help of radial basis function. In radial basis function neural network, we can easily interrupt what is the meaning function of each node in the hidden layer of the RBNN. This is difficult in multi-layer perceptron. This is difficult in now what is multi-layer perceptron? In multi-layer perceptron, we have different layers. We have different inputs layer. We have different hidden layers. We have basically we have lots of inputs and uh, uh, hidden layers and outputs layer, and we have different activations function sigmoid activation function binary activation functions these are the activation functions which we apply on multi-layer perceptrons and it is it is difficult to implement them some of the hyperparameters present in multi-layer perceptron such as the number of nodes in the hidden layer number in the hidden layer, number of nodes in hidden layers, etc., are different to optimize, but these are found in radial basis neural network. Basically, in radial basis neural neural network, we have lots of number of nodes and we apply different perceptrons on radial in different perceptron on different perceptron. We apply different radial basis functions. In radial basis functions, we can apply very, uh, different different activation functions, etc. These are the things we apply and the best approach for uh, non-linear, non-linearly separable data is radial basis function because in radial basis function, we use kernel method and kernel method is good. Kernel method is basically uh, transform the data. Low dimensional data is transformed into higher dimensional data and after that, it is easy for us to separate them with the help of a single line. Basically, it is easy for us uh, to we convert them to non-linearly separable data to linearly separable data. Thank you.